round, beautiful, aubergine, you know, peacock color Tahitian pearls. Nobody can say no to those. The beauty of these darn things is just what does it. I don't care if you're a male or a female. Naturally, black pearls have captivated the attention of men and women in the last few years. Discussing the history and value of black pearls with us today is Matt Harris of Matt Harris Designs. This video is ideal for the pearl shopper and seller alike. So stick around to learn everything you need to know about naturally black pearls, particularly Tahitian pearls. Tahitian mollusks were a big deal back as far as the 1800s. As a matter of fact, the big industry for Tahiti, most of their income came from people harvesting oysters. They weren't looking for pearls though, they were looking for buttons. Keep in mind at the time, plastics weren't developed yet. There was no such thing as a plastic button. So the button industry was like a huge deal. All right, so step ahead though to cultured pearls. Uh, when did they start in Tahiti? For all my pearl nerds out there, it's important that I make the distinction between natural and cultured pearls. In the pearl world, natural means that the pearl was found, stumbled upon, located really, in a wild mollusk, cozy in its saltwater or freshwater home. Cultured pearls are still real pearls from real mollusks, but as a result of human intervention, usually at a pearl farm. This is how the vast majority of pearls on the market today are formed. Within both the natural and cultured categories, we distinguish pearls based on whether they are from a saltwater or freshwater source. Tahitian pearls are grown in the South Pacific Ocean, so they are saltwater pearls. The first Tahitian pearl farm was um, created in 1968, but the pearls reportedly weren't that great. They weren't round. Uh, and the first round pearls that were came out of uh, Tahiti were in 1970. And once that happened, of course, everybody started farming pearls in Tahiti and they're popping up all over the place. And a few other things that happened that really pushed it uh, in 1976, uh, GIA officially called uh, Tahitian pearls a natural colored gem, so that quite helped. The value factors of pearls come down to luster. Obviously, the more luster, the better. And you really want the luster to look reflective and iridescent. Color, the darker and more intense the color, the better. Surface, ideally free of blemishes. Size, when all other value factors are equal, the value of a pearl is determined by its size. And shape, with round being the most desirable. Here is some Tahitian pearls. Here are some Tahitian pearls that are perfectly round. They're almost blemish free. They've got anywhere from kind of a light silver to a light gray to a dark gray. These have got good luster. If you were to take the same strand, but say in the same size and the same luster, but let's say these were a dark gray with purple and pink, you know, overtones with some orient, um, then they'd be amazingly more expensive, although these aren't going to be inexpensive. Here's the thing about the value and what you should be paying for pearls. There's like a hidden gem, huh, so to speak. And that is that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? So I particularly think that anybody as a designer can put together the perfect strand of pearls and a clasp, right? But what I love to design is pieces that use Baroque pearls, pearls that have such personality, they're funky shaped, circle pearls have circles kind of around them. I like putting funky stuff together. It's important to note that there is a significant difference in value between naturally black Tahitian pearls and dyed black pearls. It's pretty easy to spot the difference if you've seen it before, but it's still important that the seller disclose the color treatment when selling dyed pearls. Some pearls are dyed. When you buy black pearls, you could be buying dyed black pearls. Uh, often those are freshwater pearls that have been dyed, or you could be buying uh, Tahitian pearls. Here are some dyed pearls that are cranberry color. Great for Thanksgiving, by the way. These sell great, but there's no way these are coming out of nature. Now, this is a great example of strands of black pearls uh, or Tahitian pearls, same difference, but you see how some of them are kind of a light gray, some of them are darker. These are natural colored pearls from French Polynesia called Tahitian pearls or black pearls. I have, I brought for you, because I knew you'd ask me that question, some dyed Chinese freshwater pearls. Hard to tell in a video, but if you look at these enough in person, it's really easy to notice the difference. And there are ways to tell if pearls are dyed or not. Uh, but if you're buying, say, from a reputable person, just ask, you know, is this a freshwater pearl that's dyed? Uh, is it a Tahitian pearl that's a natural color? And you should get the answer. So inexpensive freshwater pearls probably started out as some sort of cream color that were dyed blackish. 
uh, versus natural Tahitian pearls that are all shades of gray black. So dyed pearls are by no means bad, unless they're being unscrupulously sold as having natural color. Regarding Tahitian pearls, the pearls that are coming straight out of Tahiti have completely natural color free of treatment. However, some Tahitian pearls that have gone through Japan or China may be color treated to mimic rare colors such as chocolate or pistachio. Are all naturally black pearls Tahitian? Naturally black pearls tend to be called Tahitian pearls on the market. Even though naturally black pearls that come from the mollusk, pink tata margaritifera, come from not only French Polynesia, but Fiji as well. We call those Fijian pearls, but they're sometimes sold as Tahitian pearls. And some black pearls come from the Teria sterna mollusk farmed in the Sea of Cortez in Mexico. Are all Tahitian pearls black? No, there are white pearls that come out of Tahiti. And really, technically, as you can see, Tahitian pearls aren't really black. This is a strand of black nephrite jade from Mason K. This is a gemstone that's actually the color black. In the case of Tahitian pearls, they have a dark body color due to their opaque pearl nacre. But the overtones tend to be purple, blue, green, and everything in between. I think the depth of color and overall allure of Tahitian pearls makes them very appealing, whether as a fine and valuable 18 inch strand for ladies or an inexpensive men's single pearl on black cord. These are great sellers. When I sell Tahitians to men, uh, this is often a starting pearl because this looks great. A single Tahitian, this one's drilled right through the middle on a steel chain, uh, and I either wear them on steel or leather. You can get those for, gosh, anywhere from three, four hundred dollars up to a few thousand dollars. I love seeing men wear pearls, but I especially love seeing men wear Tahitian pearls. What do you think of men wearing pearls? Be sure to let Matt and I know in the comments. And I'm a big fan of this, and this is where I might butt heads with a few people watching this video. Men and pearls are a thing. And men are wearing white strands, uh, Machine Gun Kelly white strands, Harry Styles. But you see Tahitian pearls on Steven Tyler, yeah, on um, Pierce Brosnan. T Tahitian pearls on men I think is super cool. I wear one every day. Matt sells more than just Tahitian pearls. In fact, I'm wearing a strand of pink freshwaters from Matt along with my black nephrite jade beads from Mason K. And this bracelet from Matt features a single freshwater pearl on a stretchy bangle. You'll definitely want to check out Matt's YouTube channel, which I'm going to link to in the description, which is dedicated to educating the public about pearls. Tahitians tend to be much more expensive than freshwater pearls. In the pearl world, there is freshwater and there's saltwater. Freshwater pearls being grown in lakes and streams and saltwater being grown in, well, in saltwater. So and in the saltwater world, you generally break it down into South Seas pearls, Akoya pearls, and Tahitian pearls. In the Tahitian world, saltwater pearls are generally, whether it's any three of those, more expensive than freshwater. A lot of men and a lot of famous men that are wearing pearls, um, I've noticed have started with freshwater pearls and not Tahitian pearls. In the world of Tahitian pearls, generally the less expensive pearls that you might spend five, eight, nine hundred dollars a strand on would probably be something smaller, baroque, uh, meaning not round, uh, and maybe multicolor. Under a thousand bucks easy, you could get a strand of those. This is what I always say about pearls, uh, but it's also what I always say about other gemstones. Uh, this is what I say about art, about anything. Yeah, I mean, you name it in life, the prettier it is, the more expensive it is. I want to remind everyone watching this that it is always important to shop with a seller that you trust. If you work in the industry or even if you just want to be a more informed pearl buyer, I strongly encourage you to take CPAA's Pearls as One course, which you can take for free if you use the discount code JOT at checkout. Check out the link in my description. I caution people, even though I have a website and I'm selling pearls online, I caution people against buying pearls online, at least from a source that you're not familiar with, that you don't trust, that you can't kind of verify a reputation through someplace else. Because sadly enough, there's a lot of people that misrepresent their pearls online in terms of what it is, whether it's dyed or not, for example, what origin it came from, all that sort of stuff. And it it's also really hard to see online things like overtones and whatnot. I mean, it, it's very hard to photograph pearls. We, we do it all day long and it's tough. 